And I got to the end of it and half of my class were in tears and I thought, oh, dear, this has gone really poorly. <laughs> this has gone really bad. Um- Hey Songbird, today you're in for a treat as I am joined by Dr. Daniel K. Robinson or affectionately known as Dr. Dan, contemporary singing voice specialist from Voice Essential. Dan, it is so incredible to have you here with us today. Thanks, Kerry. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely. Now, Dan, I'd like you to take us way back, way back to young Dan. Can you tell us when the love for singing started for you? Young Dan. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a long time ago, Kerry. Um, I I discovered I loved singing mm-hmm. um, from, I think, like, like a lot of people who sing from a very young age. Um, uh, I, I still remember singing in primary school and, yeah. um, and just loving, actually loving being involved in the choir mm-hmm. and... I loved it enough that I would even uh, ride to my local parish uh, church and participate in the choir with all the oldies. Oh, um, wow. And uh, with, they thought I was wonderful because I was this, you know, <laughs> young to nothing young person being involved in their choir and and uh, and. But I just loved singing with other voices and and yes. having my voice join. With the sonic landscape and and so singing something that's been with me from yeah from as far back as I can remember. Yeah, that's incredible. I just can't imagine you know all the oldies uh, in your parish just going, oh wonderful, you know, there's this young blood <laughs> join us. You must have brought the life. You and know, I was I was a boy soprano at the time, and yeah, um, and so I would sit with all the old ladies, and they just like doted on me Amazing. and um and I can remember just lapping it up <laughs> <laughs> of course of you know course, yeah absolutely. it was great it was great <laughs> so did that then lead to I don't know you know singing lessons or anything like that but how did how did that then sort of lead you on a trajectory towards I, um becoming a singer funnily enough I actually um you know I never as much as I loved the singing I mm. never really had this sort of you know, self-perception as a singer. In fact, I started playing guitar um, oh, right. from a young age and okay. um, so engaged in that also. Um, and it was actually a, a high school um, music teacher. I had a, a couple of very influential high school music t- teachers, actually probably three if I count them up. Wow. Um, and Mrs. Simpson... Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm remembering her name correctly, because we, I had one very specific music teacher who was massive influence on me. His name was Ian Champion. We called him Champs, wow. and oh, uh, he was, name. oh, he was just fabulous. But uh, it was Mrs. Simpson who I, I went into an exam, okay, to to do a performance thing for for my class. We right. all had to do this perform, you know, present something. Yeah. And so I had prepared a song by a group by the name of Petra. And so mm-hmm. I, gr- I grew up listening to a lot of Christian rock and pop. I and, 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 I, and I loved this group called Petra. And they had this song called Hollowed, um, Hollowed Eyes. Anyway, it was a or Hollow Eyes. It was a, um, a song about um, the Ethiopian um, uh, droughts and famines. And it was... It was a wow. really moving song. Anyway, I fronted up to the exam to, to really play it. And um, okay. and I'd worked really hard on the guitar to play it. And, yeah. and of course, alongside the playing, I decided to sing, you know, to self-accompany so that it wasn't just me strumming away on the guitar. I see, I see, yep. And I got to the end of it and half of my class were in tears and I thought, oh, dear, this has gone really poorly. <laughs> this has gone really bad. Um, and and so um, and I, I, my, my teacher pulled me aside at the end and she said, look, I'm not going to mark you for your guitar playing. And I, I went, oh, um, okay, what, why, why? She said, I'm going to give you an A-plus for your voice. And wow. I, I, I was like, oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> How old were you at this well, point? All Dad? I heard was A plus, um, <laughs> uh, and so I didn't care at that point. You know what she Amazing. marked me for, 
Um, and how, old, so how old were you at this point? I would have been grade eight. So that would have had me at the 12, 13, yep, 12, 13. I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. And and I, I think it was at that moment that uh-huh. I had this sort of awakening to, wow. oh, oh, okay, this singing thing can, <laughs> I've got something here perhaps. Yes. You know, yes. to the point that a 12 or 13-year-old can sort of comprehend mm-hmm. this sort of thing. Yeah. And um, and then the um, you know and then my journey of of exploring the singing even more and it was then I think I think Mrs Simpson must have gone back to the staff room and had a conversation with you know Mr Champs Champion right. because I I then started being asked to you know perform in more things and do more yeah. things and mm-hmm. and Ian Champion really started to to um, you know, to cultivate that further in me and encourage me to go into a Steadfords and, wow. you know, and, um, yeah, so, yeah. So interesting. It's so interesting that you never thought of yourself as a singer. You saw yourself primarily as, you know, just a guy who loves playing guitar. <laughs> yeah, to, well, to the point where when I, when I, uh, I, did, I grew up in a Christian church and, yeah. um, and so I would participate in my local church worship team as a guitarist, that's what as a I was. I saw myself as a guitarist. <laughs> I didn't even think of singing um, as well, being, other than the fact that I knew I enjoyed being in the you know the the, yeah. the choral stuff and. Got it. Um, uh, but I just had not, you know, identified as a yeah. singer, mm-hmm. um, and it was really I, you know. Uh, Mrs. Simpson, and I can't remember Mrs. Simpson's first name. Yeah. Um, but it was certainly Mr. Champion who who then really facilitated and nurtured that identity. Incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And so you suddenly realised you actually had a pretty good singing voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Um, how did that then lead you onto actually? I mean, now today. I mean, you know, when you were. Pre, you know, pre that that uh, song that you performed in class, yeah. you didn't even see yourself as a singer, and then suddenly you realised you did have a voice. Yeah, um, did that then lead you onto a more focused trajectory um, in terms of learning to sing, having lessons, going down that path to become a professional singer? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, when I got to grade ten, grade eleven, we, we incidentally we moved from one area, New South Wales, Lismore, New South Wales, up into Queensland in Toowoomba okay. yep. um, during my grade grade ten year. Um, so a pretty pretty pivotal point for the formation mm-hmm. of a of a young person. Yes, and um, I had. Um, seen a group in while I was still in Lismore, a group called Travellers. These were a Youth for Christ um, travelling sort of chaplaincy kind of band, right. and um, and I thought, yeah, that's cool. You know, I really, <laughs> you know, because they would come into a school and and do concerts, and then they'd do a weekend concert, and I just thought they were they were awesome. You know, right? Um, I was really taken with the with you know the performance thing. Mm-hmm. And and so um, I kind of sort of pocketed that away, thinking, oh, you know, that'd be fun to do. Long story short, I did end up auditioning um, sort of midway through my grade twelve year, um, so I would have been seventeen at this point. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, lo and behold, um, and once again auditioned on guitar slash voice. Right. Um, and people might be might be wondering whether I'm a really good guitar. I'm not a really good guitarist. <laughs> I'm. I would refer to my guitar playing as I'm a complete hack. But anywho, right? <laughs> um, uh, I can get myself by. And right. um, but but anyway, I I ended up getting into this Youth for Christ band, this Travelers band. And wow, you are kidding me! Your dreams came true, Dan. I, well, they kind of, yeah, they kind of did. I mean. You know the the reality is always very different to the fantasy yeah. um, mm-hmm. of of being in a band and living out of a suitcase for ten months, yeah. um, and we travelled the eastern seaboard. And but I really developed um, uh, a wonderful um, uh, portfolio of mm-hmm. performance experience in that mm-hmm. ten months. We did mm-hmm. we did you know close to four hundred performances in ten months. That's crazy. It was crazy. It was uh, a re- a real education, <laughs> and um, and I 
you know, I actually got to the end of that. And now you've got to remember, uh, well, not remember because I haven't told you yet, but I, I all of my training to that point, and I'd had limited singing training, but mm, okay. any singing training I had had was mm. classical. Yeah, um, okay. And so all of the training that I did, um, uh, sorry, all of the singing I did for Steadfords and those sort of things was yes. all underpinned by classical instruction. Got it. So I then hit this rock slash pop mm -hmm. band mm -hmm. and the harsh reality is I did get to the end of that 10 months um, and knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. I had experienced and taken on board quite a bit of wear and tear vocally mm -hmm. um, and uh, and was experiencing some intrinsic um, uh, stress and tension yeah. Um, and, yeah, so um, but I got to the end of that year and then did um, – had no idea what I was going to do with the rest of my life. Right. Um, I had um, contemplated going to the Sydney Conservatorium at that mm -hmm. point to do. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to audition for classical voice, but but never did because I got into this band. Got back from the travelling Will Willberries, the the travellers, and we and I decided to. Um, I went and did two years of Bible college. I'm um, thinking I was going to become wow. a youth pastor because that's what I've been right. doing for the last twelve months with with yeah. the band. Okay. Um, but but really discovered that, that wasn't really my mm -hmm. thing. Music, I just kept coming back to this music yeah, thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and uh, ended up getting into the conservatory, the Queensland Conservatorium of Music. Yeah. By virtue of a, a really um, random set of events, um, mm -hmm. which were quite um, providential, uh, and I ended up sort of commencing commencing with that. Wow, amazing. Now, um, you said that, you know, when you were actually doing the touring thing, yeah. you ended up having a bit of, you know, wear and tear yeah. with your voice and everything. How did you actually end up overcoming that? It wasn't actually until um, uh, I started at the con mm -hmm. and um, had a teacher at the time, uh, Vicky Rubin, mm -hmm. um, and she... Um, was working in team with a speech pathologist at the time, Jane Mott, um, mm. two women who I've since got to know very, very closely professionally over wow. the years. Mm -hmm. And Jane, um, she sent me along to Jane, who then also sent me along to an ENT. Yes. And uh, we were able to see some supraglottic constriction um, where my false folds were bearing down on my true mm. folds. And it all mm -hmm. came, it actually all just came back to a lack of technique yeah. and 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 that was in keeping with mm -hmm. with my experience i yes. really didn't know what i was doing i would open my mouth and hope for the best and my natural talent had got me so far yeah. as and then you team that natural talent with a very youthful instrument yes and it was able to kind of remain mm -hmm. buoyant long mm -hmm. enough yes. to get me through. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't have been able to continue along that trajectory for too much longer, yes. I think, before I would have run into some, some pretty significant problems. Yes, absolutely. So is that what um, kind of sparked, um, you know, your career, you know, probably alongside, but then pivoting into more vocal education. And I see, I mean, the way you teach is very evidence-based. You know, you're very all about the vocal anatomy and the physiology and what's yeah. going on and everything. <laughs> was there a link between, you know, the experiences that you had, had, the difficulties that you went through, and then how you actually teach today? I'd love to be able to say yes, but I don't think I can with any sense of authenticity. Where, where my love for teaching came from was mm -hmm. actually in as in my experience as a uh, contemporary uh, a worship pastor. Yeah, great. And um, it bec it was becoming very apparent to me mm -hmm. that my um, uh, that my singers in my worship team were breaking down, like just regularly, mm -hmm. you know, coming unstuck. Now. I was a worship pastor whilst I was simultaneously um, doing my own undergraduate studies um, at the Queensland okay. Con, yes. and and so those those sort of concurrent experiences mm -hmm. then led me to wanting to help my 
uh, my my singers in my team Great. to be able to carry their load much mm. more effectively and efficiently. Um, oh. And uh, and that led me into my master's thesis and then my doctoral work uh, later on. It, right, this, so while this was, you were studying, while you were doing all these other things, being a worship pastor, you were always teaching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah always yeah. teaching. Mm-hmm. And um, through those early years, I was also doing a corporate duo um, on a worship yes. team. So mm-hmm. doing a whole heap of... You know, as most working musicians have, right. uh, it's That's a, a it's a portfolio life. career, yes. right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So, um, and uh, so anyway, I, I I thought I said to my wife, well, I think maybe I need to to do a my own CD exercise collection. Cool. Um, I had been using. Um, a friend's uh, Kim Chandler's stuff called Funky and Fun. She's still got it. It's still great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. I kind of thought, well, maybe I can do my own, you know, um, and yes. and develop my own stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll be very quick to say, I, I don't, I haven't, I do have some exercises within Voice Essentials that are uniquely mine. I created them. I came up came up with the concept yep. and formed the new. But mm-hmm. the vast majority of them are just my take on some pretty old school activities for sure. singers. Sure. And I yep. put some, you know. Some I took a, a leaf out of Kim's book and created a funky backing, and you know, Amazing. hey presto, you got Voice Essentials. When yes. I when I recorded Voice Essentials one, it was only ever going to be Voice Essentials. It didn't even have a one next to it. Yep. <laughs> and it was simply to be, and it, this is back in the day of CD. Yes. Um, and so I pressed five hundred CDs. Um, very exciting to receive those in the mail. Yes. And. Um, <laughs> And I was just going to, uh, you know, present um, uh, that to my students. It was really just going to be a tool right, for my students. a resource for them, yeah. That was all it was going to be. And, in fact, mm-hmm. I wasn't even charging them for it. Like right. a, this was a part, like if you had had an individual singing lesson with yeah. me, just then the deal. They got one. J- you just got one and it enabled uh-huh. you to practice it and it was very cool. And and then I started, started to have the awakening of, I wonder if I could sell this. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and and um and so I I got my website updated to the point where I could cool. um this was in 2013 so 2 years yeah. later. I'm yeah. slow, Kerry, like it takes <laughs> me. I'm slow on the uptake. <laughs> it took me 2 years to get my website updated and lo and behold, people started to order it. <laughs> it's the best and, feeling, isn't it? And I'm like <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, uh, when you know, if you were to if you were to just dive into my stuff now, you would think that I had this grand design from the very beginning that I was going to be. And then it did not start that way. Yeah, I love it. Um, I ended up doing my own, you know, video, which I remember. I remember at the time I was so proud of. I'd worked so hard to do this video. It's yep. terrible, Kerry. Yeah. It's, I'm sure it's if, not. If, if people want it, no, it is. If people, it's still up there. I've left it yep. there because the content was not bad, but yep. the the actual production doing of, of the production is yeah. is appalling. Look, I can totally relate to that. Yeah, we've all done it, right? You've yep. all got to start somewhere. You've got to start and, somewhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I think 600 videos later, yeah, um, wow. Voice Essentials is now not only um, a, an exercise collection, which is um, sitting mm-hmm. at about 50 exercises, yeah. it's also um, lesson sheets, online mm-hmm. courses, and a YouTube channel of 600 plus videos and a Facebook community. So it's... yeah. Uh, the, again, no grand design behind it. Mm-hmm. It literally it has organically grown. Yes, yep. and uh, I think um, organic's the best way to be honest. It's it. Love yeah, it. I think in some ways it can be, and um, but it is the slow way. <laughs> yeah, slow <laughs> and, and steady. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, and I have a wonderful uh, a wonderful community um, of people that have gathered around this idea of of authentic. You know, yeah. um, singing and uh, mm. and some wonderful people that I've gotten to know. Like mm. these online communities. You know, I, twenty years ago, I would have been saying to to my then self, 
you know, trying to explain online communities, I'd be going, what? I, I yeah. don't, you know. <laughs> but now, you yeah. know, um, I'm interacting with people um, all over the world Amazing. on a daily basis mm-hmm. um, and, uh, and have gotten to know them, you know, yes. as, as fellow human beings who yeah. we all congregate around this like-minded love of yes. singing. I love that, uh, Dan. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, you um, say a lot, actually, is that you say that the birthright of every human being is to sing. Yeah. Can you unpack that a little bit more? You know, it's it's just this thing that I I cannot buy into one person being better than another. And then on top of that, we are all born with this this thing called voice. Absolutely. Yeah. And, like, we all walk, right? And, uh, uh, and you know, aside from, you know, disability, etc., mm-hmm. we all have two legs and we all walk around yeah. on the face of the planet. But we don't look at some people and go, you're a walker. <laughs> That's good. You, you know, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, you're, you're not a walker, but you, you are a walker. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. um, but the funny thing is we all have the same, we, we all have a larynx. Yeah, um, That's right. But yet we all still say... You're a singer, mm, mm, and and yeah. by the way, you're not a singer. You mm-hmm, know, like mm-hmm, yeah. how how screwed up is that? I, yeah, I yeah, think no, that's totally. screwed up. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. And consequently, what we do is by saying to someone, "You're not a singer," mm-hmm. we're saying, "Shush, we should we you 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 are not allowed to be heard because right. you don't mm. you don't add up." Mm. Right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so we're silencing people's voices. Yes, and and saying to people, Mm-mm, mm-hmm. you don't know. You know, well, yeah. what are we learning about? You know, and the wonderful thing about modern society is we we are learning to care far more for vulnerable peoples. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're we're learning to give vulnerable people a voice. Right. Well, well, I'm I'm all about giving non singers a voice. Yes. You know, and yeah. and I use that term again very loosely because I don't subscribe to the term non-singer. Yeah. Everyone yeah. is a singer. Everyone's it is singer. the mm-hmm. it is the birthright of yeah. every mm-hmm. human being to sing. Yes. Now, yes. some people, uh-huh. for whatever reason, do have a voice that we might enjoy listening to more than others. Sure. Mm-hmm. Some people go to the Olympics for walking. Yeah. It's crazy. They do, yes, right? Yes, yes. I am never going to be an Olympic level walker, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it does not stop me from walking. That's great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And let's be let's be honest. Sometimes I see some people that have a have a pretty strange gait to their walking. Right. Right. Uh-huh. You know, they kind of look a bit funny when they walk. <laughs> yeah. Some people singing. Mm-hmm is not going to be something that we encourage them mm-hmm. to put on a stadium stage. Sure. That's 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 mm. the reality of the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that does not mean you shouldn't sing. Yes. And yeah. so that's where the whole idea of yeah. um ev- you know it's the birthright of every human mm-hmm. being to sing. Yeah. You know, yeah. we should never feel like we're not allowed to Absolutely, or that we're not good enough to do or it. Or that we're or not good enough for, yeah. Yeah. you know. No, um, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely agree. Um, now, Dan, a, a question that I get a lot um, from, uh, you know, singers just, you know, all around the globe, and they wonder this question, which is, how do I find my unique voice? Mm. Uh, how do I sing like me, you know? Um, do you have any insights to offer on that? Like just in terms of, you know, voice types, classifications, but anything else, anything else that you sort of feel is mm. important when it comes to finding our true voice? The premise of the question of how do I find my voice mm-hmm. suggests that your voice is lost. Right. Good point. Y- your voice is not lost. Mm. You've actually had your voice in the very moment you scream that first in you know <laughs> exhale of breath. That's the you truth. know w- once you left mum's womb. Mm-hmm. So you know this idea of how do I find my voice is um, is is not I think the right question to ask. Okay. So because the, the right voice question? is not lost. Yeah, I love that. That's what, awesome. 
what is actually happening here is what people want to know is how do I develop my vocal identity? Okay. How do I how do I really, you know, um, develop my own vocal signature? Yeah. I remember when going back to my teenage years, I don't know if you did this, Kerry, but when you were developing your signature, did you yep. like sit for hours on end in, you know, math class writing your signature. <laughs> did you do that? Do you, do you reckon? I actually reckon I did because yeah. I was a horrible math student. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you do. And you, you're like, it has to be just it's right. It's got to be it's just not, right and I want the good. swirl here. And, <laughs> you know, I and, and so, you know, at the time when I was developing my signature, which is now, I've got to admit, I'm just a scrawl when it comes to my signature. <laughs> but back in my teenage years, I had this lovely flowing text, you know, and I'd spent a lot of time just yeah. practicing that mm. signature. And as a result, my signature, my written signature, developed. And that's the same thing that needs to happen for a singer that is seeking to find their voice, that needs to develop their vocal identity. One needs to spend more time with their own voice. Yes, that's great. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Mm -hmm. So you will not develop a vocal signature by singing more songs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is borne out by the fact that, you know, my young when I get have a young student come in, more often than not, and they can be wonderfully gifted singers, yes. you know, people who have this natural bent towards right. singing, a musicianship mm -hmm. that sort of seems yeah. to be innate. Yeah. Um, but they, they sound like everyone else. Right. Because mm -hmm. up until the point they walk into my studio, mm -hmm. typically speaking, yep. they haven't really done any technical development of their voice. All they've been doing is listening to their favourite artist yeah. and mimicking. Mimicking. Mm-hmm. Mm. It has its place, and I don't want to be heard to suggest that that yeah, sure. doesn't have a place. Yes. But when we do that, we're actually learning to write someone else's signature. Oh, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what we need to do as, a, as, our, as singers ourselves yeah. is learn to write our own signature. Absolutely. But the only way we do that is yeah. to really get down into the nitty-gritty of spending more time working on our own voice, yes. which, in my humble opinion, requires systematic, methodical, technical work. And yeah. that's a big part of my approach to my, my teaching. Yeah. Um, I am a very technically focused singing teacher. Yeah. Um, uh, and and so uh, that's that's always my response is that, and, and it's not a response that people want to hear because actually it requires work. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. It's not the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think it can be fun. Yes. Um, and oh yeah. Uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm a bit a of a nerd, vocal so. nerd like that, <laughs> yes. but um, and I think there's a lot of people out there who who also find a lot of reward and a lot of enjoyment from technically mm. developing their voice. Yes, and it has been my observation. Mm -hmm. um, over 20, this is my 27th year of teaching. Wow. Anyway, um, it's been <laughs> my experience and observation is that, yes, it is the long road. Yeah. But it is the far more assured road of developing yes. a vocal mm -hmm. identity. Yes. And in doing so, you find your own voice. Yes, I love that. Yep. So it sounds like to you it's, it's about... Um, getting the right technical training so that you can actually get the most out of your voice that you've already been given. Yeah. Um, right? And, and it com obviously comes with work, right? You've got to work with the right teacher. You've got to be practicing every day, all of that stuff. And understanding how your vocal anatomy actually works. Yes. I guess is a big part of that too. Yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm a great believer in, for the most part, yeah. what I learnt at university in yeah. vocal pedagogy classes yes. Yes. Even up to a master's level uh -huh. was was not rocket science. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you get into resonance and, and acoustics, that becomes yeah. a bit like rocket science. But, right. but for the most part, things like, so I teach my students 
things about biology, things about mm. the structural content of the larynx, the you know the way the muscles work. Because well, I learnt it. Why why yeah. can't X Y Z singer learn that as well? Oh, you know, I think it's and, essential. Yeah, and so um, yeah, I think we can all learn these yes. this information. And also learn to apply the information to our yes. own instrument. I love it. Yeah, I love how you're making singing just so accessible to, to anybody who wants to, you know? Yeah. Um, amazing. How do we actually find out, I guess, our voice type? Like what's the correct way to go about that? And then when, when we've been given a classification, is that, is that it? Like is that all who we are for the rest of our lives? Mm. Can we develop that? Really, to to if you if you absolutely must know what your voice type is and be really find someone a, 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 an expert a, a singing teacher who can do that with you yes. and listen to you because it's yep. not just about higher singable note lower singable note yeah yeah there are other factors involved yep. in that what are some of those factors so uh, there's a thing that certainly I was. And, I, and, and I'm starting to question my use of language here because it's language that was used with me in the con, at the conservatorium, but it may be outdated. Um, it was language that was used with me was prima voce, seconda voce, prime voice, secondary voice, with prime voice always sitting, you know, around about over an octave within the middle of your voice, and okay. then you've got these edges, seconda voce, sec secondary voice sitting on the outer edges, and right. depending on where the prima voce sits, mm -hmm. is and, and that's going to give you a sense of weighting in your voice, mm -hmm. is going to then determine where what your voice type mm. is. So, yeah, you might be able to sing as high as a tenor but still be a baritone. Yeah. So I went, to, uh, I went to a uni with a guy by the name of Adam Lopez. Last I checked, he still held the world, the Guinness yes. Book World you went Record. To uni with him? I went to uni with That's Adam. That's crazy. Um, and uh, and and haven't seen Adam for a number of years, but at, I knew him very well. We used to do corporate work together. Wow. He 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 has the Guinness Book World Record for the highest, the highest singable note. note of a male, right? Yes. <laughs> it might at the time might have even been for any human being. He can sing notes off the keyboard. Off the keyboard. I know. It's crazy. It's absolutely right? nuts. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he was always booked. When we sang together, he yeah. was booked as a baritone. Right. Okay. And That's I was booked as the tenor. Right. <laughs> I can't okay. sing off the keyboard. Yep. yep. So, so are you talking about the primary? This, we're talking mm -hmm. about where did where did the general colouring of his voice sit? Well, mm -hmm. he had a, um, he's got a much richer tone than I do. Um, and uh, and so we were we were always teamed as baritone tenor. Yeah, interesting. So, so yeah, it okay. comes back to the weighting of the voice, and this is why right. there's some nuance here that you you know. Yeah. Now you asked the the next the follow on question was you know does it always so once you've been classified is that yeah. where it sits? Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, certainly. Um, from your primary school years through mm -hmm. early, you know, through puberty, yep. the, we're obviously going to get a change, not only yep. in, in male voice mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. in female voice. That's right, yep. Um, uh, and so it will start to bed down in your sort of late teens yeah. and you'll get a good sense of what your emerged adult mechanism is going to do. Yeah. Um, but what I find is that... When we start to work on technique and we mm -hmm. start to empower the voice with some skill, yes, where that voice settles mm. and starts to be more comfortable in, you know, hab 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 um, I want to say the word um, habitating, yeah. um, then uh, that that is always often quite interesting. Yeah, it you know, and sometimes I have had. These are these are less common, but I've had the experience where you know a student walks in completely convinced that they're a, a tenor, um, and then as we you know work and develop and see the voice really you know take on, the voice settles into being far more comfortable as a, a baritone slash barry tenor, sort of a midpoint, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is yep. often comes as great relief to the singer. Because yeah. as a result, there's less strain, there's less wear and tear, yeah. Yeah. and on all of these things, you know, end up being far more 
um, yeah. you know, better for the singer in the long term. Yeah. So what I don't subscribe to, mm-hmm. and there are a couple of videos online, um, one in particular I'm thinking of right now, which will remain nameless, where it says, if you want to be a tenor, you can be a tenor. Right, right. Like, mm-hmm. well, that's like saying to me, if you want to be six foot two, you can be six foot two. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm five foot eight. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm always going to be five foot eight. Yeah. Because my DNA, which I cannot mm-hmm. change, mm-hmm. says mm-hmm. I'm yes. five foot eight. Yes. Um, and. And so your anatomy, your mm-hmm. your the biology that you have been born with, yes, does dictate the terms. Yeah. It creates some parameters for you uh-huh. Uh-huh. that you have to learn to to habitate. Now, yeah. you know what I find is most singers who have not explored their voice technically have not yet discovered where those boundaries lie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And even if they have discovered the boundary, more often than not, they didn't realise they discover it and, and actually they're probably singing outside the boundaries, you know, yeah. in an unhealthy way. Yeah. So learning to to um, find those that, that mm-hmm. boundary is a part of technical development and the development yeah. of, a, a, of a singer. Well, it comes back to, you know, like if you're wanting to find who your, like what your true unique voice is, i.e. I, your vocal identity as you yeah. mentioned it, um, then it's not about being able to do anything and everything. It's actually about finding out where is my sweet spot, you know, because of my anatomy, because of my yeah. DNA, where is my sweet spot? And then doing the work to actually bring the best out of that, you know. Yeah. And you will find that in that you don't feel limited because you might be thinking, but well, I don't want to be limited. I don't want to just be a Barry or a tenor or whatever. But actually it's not It's not the case. It's, it's, it, it's, it's actually quite empowering. You know, as I listen to you, I'm actually inspired to, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. really explore that more with my students. I think that's amazing. Hey, Dan, you know, it's obvious that you are absolutely passionate about health helping singers uh, to really find their voice. Um, you're very, very passionate about making singing accessible to everyone. Yeah. So how can we find out more about your work and what you do? Um, so there's quite a few different places. Um, yeah. uh, one of the places would be to check out my YouTube channel, Dr. Dan's Voice Essentials, um, and uh, you can you can help me get to the 200,000 subscriber mark, which Woo! we're... We're Come about on, three, three or four thousand shy of, of that right now. Yep. Um, you can check out my online learning materials at voiceessentials.com.au because, of course, I'm in Australia. Fantastic. Awesome. Hey, songbirds, go and just click on the links. They're all in the description box. Go and check out Dr. Dan's stuff. Now, Dr. Dan, do you have any final words of encouragement for songbirds around the globe before we let you go? Look, I, I think the, the very um, nature of what you do, Kerry, um, is, is I would just want to reinforce it because, you know, we've, I've been waxing lyrical during our interview today about, you know, the birthright of every human being to sing. But mm-hmm. I know, you know, that's exactly your intent and, and yeah. what you're about. And it was one of, one of your videos way back, one of your videos that I yeah. saw when I first started the channel and, and started looking into other people doing video stuff mm-hmm. and it was just your orientation and the way you were encouraging people. I thought, yeah, that's that's how I want to, you know, um, oh, so really kind. apply. <laughs> so I, I would just encourage people to continue engaging in the culture that you're building in your community um, because it is so closely aligned with what I'm I'm doing <laughs> also, and yeah. uh, and so I enc- I encourage people, you know, uh, give voice to your voice, and oh, allow that. allow your voice to be heard because it deserves to be. Oh, amen, brother. Thank you so much for your time spent with us today, Dr. Dan. We are all the more better for it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, what an incredible conversation that was with Dr. Dan. So Songbirds, don't forget to go and check out all of his links. They're all in the description box below. Now, if you want more on how to sing and develop your voice, go and check out this video here. You are going to love that. And Songbird, you know that I am always believing in you. So why don't you get out there, get grounded, take flight and sing.